Welcome back to another episode of The Banana Show, where we speak about everything mental health and self-help related. I'm your host, Anna Banana, and this is the first episode of the Young Business Owner Series. Um, I'm doing this more so for myself and others, I guess, because I want to, I want to, I kind of want to start a business-ish And I want inspiration from others and also information. So I figured out that I would do a young business owner series where I'd allow young business owners to come on and talk about their business and, you know, how they, their journey with their business. So that's the aim for today. And there would be a lot more interviews. And if you'd like to be on this series you can just email me and i'll set up the time without further ado we are interviewing matt today he is a owner of a travel blog he has traveled um a lot of countries in the uk he's from the uk and he owns a travel blog blog with his girlfriend um That's basically it. He's going to be on shortly to tell us about his journey, why he started, you know, the travel blog and everything else related to business and mental health for the young entrepreneur or young business owner series. You realize that I look tired or high. I literally just came home 30 minutes or an hour ago from my day job and I am so tired. But, you know, the show must... The show must go on. So I'm going to go ahead and get him on. And I will see you guys in two seconds, I guess. So welcome, Matt. I am so happy to have you here. Um, So you can go ahead. I introduced you at the beginning, but you can go ahead and tell us how did you come up with the idea to start this? travel business yeah so the travel story society is a blog where um lots of people can come on and uh, tell us their favorite travel stories and it's an opportunity for people who don't normally do things like um like blogging and things like that it's an opportunity for them to do it and try and find out if they like it before setting their own kind of one as well and the main reason that i did it is simply out of our boredom i feel like a lot of the world (laughs) got really bored during um really bored during covid and uh, obviously covid's still happening now and just not being able to travel and me and my girlfriend talked about what we missed the most and it was like kind of sitting in a hotel or in a hostel and talking to other travelers about their travel stories as well so we kind of wanted to uh be able to do that without actually being able to go there and it's gone from strength to strength kind of and we've been really lucky that loads of people have wanted to uh, tell us their favorite travel stories and we found we've heard some great ones that we wouldn't have heard otherwise that's interesting that's interesting and you know since it's covid time you know with this blog how how do you run it personally like what does it take to start the blog or the podcast well i know about the podcast and i'll do an episode about that separately but i wanted to know what does it take to start a blog yeah just to start a blog like the one that the one that we do so yeah. if you wanted to start your own blog i i also um used to do my own blog i've been a travel writer for about four or five years now um i used to do my own blog and if you want to set one up yourself you just need to be able to write you need to have a real passion for whatever you're writing about whether you're writing about fitness you're writing about yeah. travel, you're writing about, I don't know, I've seen some weird blogs and scrolling <laughs> for everything, like writing about your cat's favorite food or whatever. Um, you just need to have a passion for it. You need to be able to like sit there and say, I'm going to write this today. Nobody's forcing me to write it. Only I can be, only I can force myself to be writing it today. And to start one, like um, what, to start what we do, where it's like a community and it's, it's lots of people having to work together. You've just got to, like get, put yourself out there and say to people like hey we want to work with you we think you're a really talented writer would you write for us and you you'll send thousands and thousands and thousands of messages to try and get your foot in the door with some of these bigger like instagram 
um, Instagram travelers and stuff like that, you'll send thousands of messages before you get just one reply. So you just need to be persistent and you need to be really passionate about what you love as well. That is that is a good answer. But for some people who might be fearful and who have um, a problem with rejection where that is concerned, what advice would you give them? Because sometimes it is, it's one thing to be persistent, but it's another thing to keep going after something and then realizing you're not getting the result what you want. So what piece of advice would you give them to function if they have like rejection problems? Yeah, I, if you have like serious rejection problems and uh, you, you kind of don't have the patience uh, to just take hit after hit after hit, then it's podcasting you'll know and blogging isn't the space for you like it just takes a yeah. long time it just takes a long time to grow like it's not something like our blog kind of got not big but bigger than I thought it would do quite quickly <laughs> but then the podcast is just like you'll it do takes. like you'll do shows where two people will listen to it but if those two people keep on coming back then you can grow on them and stuff like that you just need to so if you have serious problems with patience and rejection and stuff then this game probably isn't for you but if you just know that what you're doing is something that you love and it's something you're really proud of then you don't mind getting knocked back by people you don't get you don't mind getting rejected because you know what you're doing is worthwhile and yeah. they're the ones that are missing out a lot of the time that's where that's where my headspace is with it at least when we keep on getting rejected yeah sometimes when i because sometimes I have that problem like I, where I don't like to ask people for things. But when you're in the podcasting industry, it's, it is reliant on other people. So you're, have, you're going to have to ask. So what I tell myself is that I am going to get the work done regardless if this person says yes or it says no. So my goal is to always put out an episode episode whether I have someone or I don't have someone. And that's what I have been doing and I, you can also practice asking, ask more than one people. Don't just ask the same person over and over and over. Somebody will say yes, and then it will help you to build up your confidence to ask more yeah. and not take it so personal. Like a practice thing. That's what I do at least. Yeah. So for like our, our podcast, um, we finished season one. Season one was more us seeing if we could do it, like learning how to do it. Like, yeah. you know, it's it's something that you just have to kind of slog through and pick up. Like if you listen to episode one and episode 20, everything's you realize so the growth. You realize the growth. Yeah. And um, so we have, but we decided to take a break um, for a little bit and we're coming back with season two. And our rule for season two is, we're only asking people with a hundred thousand followers or more just for two weeks to see if we can get through to any of them. So like, or like 50,000 followers or more, just, just to see how many of those kind of guys we can get. And that basically just takes sitting there going through Instagram, going through loads mm. of different people's blogs and just sitting there and just being like, we've sent out thousands of messages to ask people to collaborate with us. And we received like three or four back. Like it's that, it's that kind of like hard slog that yeah, you've really got to, they've really got to put through. Um, and, and then the, and then the next goal is, so we only need a couple of those big ones. And then we, we, we mainly like chat to some friends or like people who've been following our Instagram or our blog since day one, who we're like, you deserve your opportunity to get some promotion alongside these guys who've got a hundred thousand mm. followers so that we can get promoted by them. And then we like, and then we promote our friends and stuff like that and bring them along with us. So it's like a mixture of the two. And you've just got to like, honestly, when I say it's, it's probably the biggest thing that we do. Like you see the nice, once you've got your website set up, once you know how to write stories, once you've got the editing skills down, the, the biggest real thing you're going to be doing yeah, the work begins in just sitting there for hours on your phone and just messaging people to try and get out. And that's the same with things like sponsorships or or anything like that. You just need to message as many people as you can. And if you believe in your product and you truly believe that you're putting something out there that's worthwhile, then they'll get back to you. Someone will get back to you and see the, yes. see the glory in what you're doing as well. Congrats on, on finishing season one and, and continuing to go into season two. When I just, just started podcasting, like I got my first validation when, cause when you're promoting on Instagram, it's very important to put your hashtags 
So yeah. I always put my hashtags and somebody that has from Chicago that has like a huge type of following decide that she's going to email me to come on the podcast because she's very passionate about mental health and that's what her career surrounds and that gave me like a big validation to push forward so even if I'm having a bad day or I feel like I'm not contributing to the podcast as much as I really want to I remember the time that I had that person on my podcast and it really helps yeah and it's like just waking up and thinking Oh, I can't be, but it's that it's that thing we were talking about where you you just need to push yourself because it's your own thing you have nobody else to push you like those little those little validations are really really important yeah and you have to as you said believe in your product and know what you're selling and somebody will get back to you well what has it been like since you had to stay home to, to be motivated yeah so we actually started ours from like we started the idea during covid and then we started to put it out after so in the in the uk we had like we all got out of lockdown we we thought we'd done it we thought oh we like we just need to wear masks when we go outside we'll be fine the vaccine's coming soon and that was around that was around november so i was like right well let's let's put the travel blog out now when people are going to start traveling again let's let's put it out now and then people will be really interested because they're going to start to be able to travel in like january february whatever and then it got to the end of christmas and it was like you guys are all going back inside again until um until like now we're still like we're still in doors now we're getting let out next week that's when that's when the uk fully starts to reopen again and stuff and for us it, it felt a bit crushing at the start but then we were so early on in our in our blogging that we've just been able to throw ourselves into it because obviously we're not getting paid for our website not getting paid for our podcasts and stuff like that um we're start like starting to get a few sponsorship deals and stuff now but um we have to have other jobs but because we've been able because we've been in lockdown um we've been able to put all of our attention on this so try to spin things into a positive obviously running a travel blog during times of lockdown is yeah it's quite it's hard, hard but <laughs> it's quite hard since you're not able to travel to places but if you turn it into a positive of well everybody's we'll just take backup travel stories that people have had for a long time yeah i get that and how how has it been doing so far um have you been monetized yet or are uh, you just working on building it yeah, so we're starting to get a few sponsorship deals and stuff coming through. Like there's, we're starting to get a few, few little nibbles here and there, you know, <laughs> of a little bit of money enough to, enough to buy a new microphone for the podcast or some mm. merch. Um, uh, some merch. We have some merch already here. Travel Ooh. Story Society hoodies and stuff. Um, but just like just some little bits, but it's mainly about like building the building the brand, building the business, because that that's what we set it up to do. We didn't set it up to be monetized at first. It just got quite successful. Like people enjoyed it more than more than we thought they were going to at first. So um, we've been in contact, but we're we're working with a few big like nonprofit organizations and stuff like mm -hmm. that. To, um, so we're not asking them for any money, obviously, because it's it's charity exactly. work. So we're not yeah. gonna we're, we're not gonna ask them for any money and stuff. Um, so and we're starting to get featured on a few other big sites and things like that. And for only uh, to only been up since November, I I think we're doing really well. We brought my um my friend from uh from Cardiff is now working with us as well. So we so we're building Whoa. the team out. Yeah, we're building, building the team out a little bit. Yeah, and we're trying to we're trying to improve i guess like we're more focused on the improvement and growing the following on instagram and stuff is our biggest goal at the minute and growing the following on facebook is our biggest goal because then it takes so much less work once you've got those followers to get those followers to go yeah. to to get those followers to go to the blog once you've got them but to actually get them and keep them is what's really hard to do yeah, it's more of trying to grab their attention and keep them coming back that's the that's the main goal yeah like Why the blogging not? and podcasting goal is a very different business to like other, yeah other goals where it's like you're judged on your amount of followers because the way that we make money is from sponsorship deals and uh things like that like people aren't going to pay us to write a blog people aren't going to pay us yeah that's per true. blog that we write that they're, they're going to pay us for the amount of followers 
of ours that we send to them so it's yeah so it, it gets like really important to have as many followers as you can so that's what we're working on at the minute the social media side my um my partner's in the other room listening to a audiobook on social media marketing and things like that so we're that's where we're hitting at the minute yeah that sounds really productive and encouraging and I really do like to hear stories like this what have you like what are some of the obstacles that you have encountered and how did you maneuver them yeah so I remember actually um one of our first blog posts working with somebody of like like she has like 3,000 followers so not like not loads but a lot more than we did at the time this was I think this was our like fifth or sixth blog post that we were putting up or something like that so all the ones before had been had been mine or Cynthia's and um this this one person we uh we asked them like oh can we use can we use your blog to put on our website we weren't we weren't familiar with like um uh with the google algorithms and stuff yet and she was like yeah yeah of course um i'd love it if you put my blog on your website so we took the blog and put it straight on our website and she messaged us 10 minutes after it went up saying hey i didn't know you were going to take it word for word that's so that's criminal you can't just take my stuff like that's stealing that's plagiarism like that's that's not what i thought you were going to do and it's like well that is exactly what we said we were going to do we said we were going to take your blog and put it on our website and there's this misconception in the blogger community that duplicate um, duplicate blogs are a real problem, which they're not if it's just one or two. It's That's only a problem if your blog's getting taken and put on 500, 600 websites that, you're, that people then can't find your site to go find it on. If we had it on our site and it was on her site, the people who were typing in Google would, uh, would most likely would, find would both. find her site would find her site first and then they would find our site but um but it was it was actually like it was terrifying at the time like, it was horrible because we were like oh my god our whole business plans down the drain like what are we gonna do and uh i looked into it and i said well actually it's not a problem but why don't we just get people to do original pieces of writing just for us and then yeah. we don't have the problem of just being a sharing website and stuff. So actually out of that difficulty, that Came honestly, a new idea. Heart wrenching, heart wrenching. <laughs> we were about, about a month in, I've been working really hard on the branding. I learned how to do the website by entirely by myself and stuff. Mm -hmm. And like, and Cynthia had been working on the branding, been working on the logo, all the social media and things like that. And uh, honestly, it just tore my, it, like, it tore my heart out. It was absolutely horrible. Um, but from that, we've, we just complete like we switched the business plan and we're like, right. Yeah. Instead of just taking people's, they're going to write stuff for us so that we only have original things on our site. So like our site is totally original and it's just loads of people writing for us rather than we're just sharing their, rather than we're just sharing their work. So that, that was actually really helpful. That's probably one of the only bad experiences that we've had with our writers with people who've been writing for us so far like when you're trusting other people so much it can be quite difficult and yeah. uh, like we've had people like who said they'd write for let's say the 23rd of a month and then they that didn't show them but we've been messaging them and messaging them and messaging them they didn't show up but we can work around that because we learned that we have so many blogs in advance that we can just yeah. put one of those in so it's totally fine and then the other main, like the main problem that happens every day is waking up and forcing yourself to do it. And if you don't have like an inner, uh, it's, it's why I do with Cynthia. Cynthia is the driving force <laughs> behind us actually getting stuff done. You like should make her come say hi since she's actually a part of the brand and stuff. Yeah. I'll go yeah. get her. Yeah. I'll go get her. Matana, our social hi, media manager hi. and co-founder of the Travel Story Society. Hi. hi. I know that you're a part of the, the brand, so I wanted to see you guys together, you know, since it's a oh, brand you. and everything. Nice to yeah, meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> okay. Yes. And um, how, how do you stay motivated for, uh, since it's COVID and, you know, it can be really hard to stick to what you want to do and stick to your business and such and planning and all that how do you keep yourself 
in the in the mental space to keep on pushing I think it's easier for us because we actually like motivate each other so if so if I'm being a bit like oh I don't want to do this today then Matty will say no we need to do this and I will do the same for him it's it's mostly it's <laughs> much more you no, no, no like I, I'll wake up in the morning and just be like I don't want to do this I've said I'm gonna write two blogs today <laughs> I'm not gonna do it and Cindy will be there like Matty you you really need to do it you've said you're writing so like, I mainly write the blogs for other people's for other people's blogs to get our name out there on their blog so they'll come yeah. watch us so oh. Cindy is like you said to somebody else that you'd write for them if it was just for us I'd let you off but it's not just for us yeah. you're letting down somebody else if you don't write it so we so we kind of sit there and have to do that for them it's so, so much easier when you have like a routine and you you plan things out as well so if you just write everything down and say this is gonna this is what I'm gonna do like this week and you just stick to it i know it's really simple but at least you, you can't you can't forget about it and it's going to be there in the back of your mind nagging you and being like i'm still here and you still haven't you still haven't done this so you better do it <laughs> oh so it's like you write down what you're going to do ahead of time before you do it focus your camera it's kind of blur going in okay. and out yeah it, still- it does do it does do that auto focus i think it's the lighting that's the oh that's the yeah, issue maybe. yeah i did oh. like because the light just streams down from in here it like focuses in and out sometimes oh okay i'll just work with it then that's okay sorry thank sorry. you <laughs> okay so yeah I, our routine is very hard to stick to especially when we are knocked out of you know the regular routine of life itself so yeah you're inside all the time it is hard to hold yourself accountable when you're literally inside all the time and it's not something that you have to have to do but as you say he has to write for other people which holds him accountable as well because if he didn't then i think there would have been a problem with you guys falling back because there's nothing there to hold him accountable yeah, exactly. And it's very much the um it it's very much difficult to keep yourself to a schedule. So you just you just have to stay like so passionate about it. And you were talking about mental health before, and it's I think it's really important that if you're hitting a level where you feel like it's getting too much to just take a break. Like we took a break for a, a week, maybe two weeks, and um without doing anything major. Like we normally post like three blogs a week and in those two weeks we only posted one and it was straight after we finished season one of the podcast so sometimes it's better to take a one week two week break than to have to be out for two three months because you've pushed yourself so incredibly far and kept yourself so incredibly tight that we're losing four but we lost four blogs worth of views well if we didn't take the break then we could have lost 12 16 weeks of blo- uh, 16 views from a blog um 16 blog views that we oh, would that's, have that's, otherwise had that's four times more yeah exactly mm-hmm. so make sure you take if, if it's getting to a point where you feel like you need to take your break then take your break that's a, like i got that with my degree like it, in my degree i was like right i can't do this anymore i'm just gonna take a break for like two weeks to stop me from just like fizzling out and not being able to do the rest of my degree and uh, and stuff like that it's it's really important yeah and i think when you take that break as well you get more ideas that are more like organic ideas you don't try to go think of something crazy crazy that just won't work just because you need something new i just think if you take that time away from it a bit you'll just think of something and it'll be much better than you just really trying to push yourself because then you're not going to be really into it yeah that's true and i think sometimes taking a break gives you the time to find back the passion that you had for it so keep on going is like you you will resent it because you feel like you have to do it but when you take a break you'll find back the passion and the love for it so you don't feel like this is too much and then yeah, stop and, it, and quit yeah. completely yeah and it's it's like in a time where we're in and out of the house and your friends are doing minimal amount of things like um if you're if you're having to do loads of blogging stuff rather than go see your friends when you haven't seen your friends in ages then you're just going to resent it to be honest 
a blog shouldn't feel like work until you're getting paid for it. Like once, and even then it shouldn't either. But once you're getting paid for it, you don't mind like having to yeah. stay inside and doing stuff that you don't mm-hmm. want to do. But at a point where, so for, for, for people who are looking to kind of like start their blogging journey for people who thought about doing a blog, don't take it too seriously too quickly. Like find out if you want to do it first and then pay for your domain name and then pay for your website development and stuff and stuff like that and then start to look into getting monetized and also don't get monetized too quickly know that you're comfortable with your product before going into getting monetized otherwise yet yeah, once you get monetized like you have to put out loads of content like all the time to make it worthwhile so but make sure you're comfortable in your product before selling it out to people yeah definitely yeah yeah that's that's a good advice that's good advice because sometimes even with the podcast i sometimes listen to see if i'm comfortable with the content that i'm putting out before i put it out even though sometimes i hate hearing my voice repeatedly but (laughs) but you know that's we have to do what we have to do sometimes and um i have another question Oh, when when you when were you, when you were in the beginning stage, did you have any fear of starting? Um, pass that on to you. Did you have any fear of starting? Um, I don't I don't think so because it was kind of like we didn't really know what we were what we were doing or where we were going with this. So it was just kind of like let's try and do this. So I wasn't freaking out about it because we were just maybe it should be the other way around maybe I should like should have freaked out because I didn't know what I was doing (laughs) but but like I wasn't because it it just it just I allowed myself and I think Maddie did too to just learn whilst doing it yeah it's like I've done it before like I had I had my own blog before so I knew I knew how to set up a blog so all of that fear was all of that fear was taken out of it and all the fear that we were able to, all all of the time we were able to take out of it because one of us knew what we were doing a little bit to start with. We could put on the bigger things of things like SEO and moving up the Google ladder and all of that kind of stuff. This stuff that normally freaks bloggers out. We were able to <laughs> attack that from the start because we already knew how to do the website. And then it's something that we love doing so much. And we did it because like I was... I was very happy to pay for a domain name and pay for the website because the idea was we were going to hear other people's travel stories. Like we were going to hear something that we'd be missing from COVID. It wasn't for money. Like obviously we were thinking like if we get paid, it still isn't. Yeah. It's still not about money. If if we got paid while doing it. Great. Awesome. Love. Would love to never have to go and do a hard day's work. Would love to just sit talk to people about travel stories, write on my own travel stories and that for the rest of my life. That'd be fantastic. But the thing that we set it up for was just hearing other people's travel stories that we hadn't heard before. And that's happened a lot. Like there were loads of people that we would have never, ever have met that we've... So many lovely people as well. Yeah, exactly. And with uh, with the community of this kind of thing, you have to sift through a lot of people who are trying to use you you have to sit through a lot of people who are like yeah like you know it's like the instagram community and stuff like there it's all for their own like it's all for their own game but then when you find those people who are so incredibly lovely and actually get the point of the get the actual point of the business so we were contacting people and it was like yeah we'll do it for 50 pounds and it's like that's not the point like that's not what it's for it's just to share a travel story with like somebody else and stuff so once you find those people it's so lovely yeah oh so you had people wanting you to pay them for their story yeah exactly like they're like well why wouldn't we just put it on our blog and it's like because that's that's not the point and we offer free advertisement for everybody's blog like like we're we're like we've got this amount of people viewing our website every day i think it's like one thousand 1,100 people viewing our website every month. Sorry, not every day. That's a lot of people. (laughs) 1,000 like every month. That's um, still good. That's still good. Yeah, viewing our our website. And those people are going to see your 
those people are going to see your blog and your name and your your a link to your blog or whatever company you want to do will be on it and they're saying well it'll be 30 pounds to like for me to write for you because i'm i've got this amount of followers and stuff and it's like right okay well you don't get the idea so that so that's fine but we found so many people that love the idea and are like we don't get to travel so it's so nice to um share our travel stories like we've just it's nice to chat to people as well that's what people from the podcast say and i actually was more nervous about the podcast not the blog yeah the podcast kind of is far really more putting yourself out there i think yeah and just chat to strangers a lot of the time and i i had to like prepare myself for it as well but um yeah just some people who are just so amazing uh they come write, write a blog or come on our podcast and and we've we love the people we've had on our podcast yeah it's the like people who've written blogs for us yeah it's like we're making our own little community that's why it's called the travel story society like we're making our own little society of people that we like to work with and as they grow hopefully we grow and as we grow yeah. hopefully they grow and it's it's that kind of that kind of thing and it was just created to hear people's stories so there was nothing to be too nervous about but i do understand when people get nervous about it i I get I at the start it was when I wrote a story for it I was worried about like my friends who I was on that trip with seeing it and being like oh I don't remember it happening this way or oh you've shown this in a really bad light when you shouldn't have and stuff and that's just stupid like nobody's gonna nobody's gonna think that though like my friends of course like of course they didn't do that they are friends like if you're confident in your writing ability then you should be fine and people who were worried when they're blogging about what other people think it's like if, if you're happy with it what well, it shouldn't matter like mm-hmm. you, you you get into the business of what other people think if you get into this business like it's of course it's really important you want people to enjoy your writing so they'll they'll come back but if you believe in your writing other people are going to believe in it as well like that's yeah the, that's the point and those two like hate speaks the language of hate speaks louder than the language of love so you're going to hear those two people hating on it but when you see a hundred views a hundred views on it and 10 comments being how much they loved it and stuff like that then like it's much more worth it luckily we haven't had anyone say we hate this or this is wrong i'm i'm you have yeah how did, you, yeah, yeah. That's... how did you deal with that because sometimes you know even when we are aware and we are sure and we are confident in what we are putting out sometimes a hundred people can say they love it but we pay attention to that one person that doesn't like it oh, so I remember now. What, yeah, it wasn't what, remember it, now? it wasn't actually a piece of writing that we did it was one of the people who we work with uh, called classicist with an atlas and she's amazing she has a really cool website that's really different to everybody else and we ended up having to stick up for her because it was us sharing it that was the bigger problem because when we share stuff we go through facebook groups where we think they might be interested in in the blog and it was one on um machu picchu in peru and i shared it in a blog called uh uh called peru or travelers in peru or something like that and loads of these um american expats so people who are from the states who now live in peru started berating it being like this is so out of date why do you think people who live in peru want to see this and it's like well it's a group called travelers in peru take it up with the admin like the admin of the group let me post it and like they were attacking me at first and i was fine with that i was like cool i get it i hate when people share stuff in groups that it has nothing to do with the group but but... it has a lot to do with the group though exactly exactly so the admin was the admin said it was fine and i messaged the admin of the group saying is is this okay there's a lot of people saying it's it's not okay i'll you can take it out if it's if it's not okay and they were just like of course it's fine it's a blog on machu picchu in a group about peru (laughs) and i was like right okay and then they started attacking the writer. So they didn't like message her or anything. She doesn't know about this. So if she does listen to this podcast, when well, we share it on our social medias and stuff like, sorry, <laughs> Amelia. But um, they were saying like, all this information's out of date because it's from 2016 and we were sharing it in 2020. And they were like, oh, people can't go that way anymore. People can't go that way. And it's like, 
it's not a guide it's like a we story. don't we don't write guides that's not like and i started to get i started to get really cross with this one particular woman and knew knew i shouldn't <laughs> no you should just leave it alone if anybody's listening leave it alone that's that's the best way to deal with it but i just started saying look it's a guide you clearly haven't read past the first two lines of the thing so if you can't be bothered to read it then you shouldn't be bothered to comment either and she just like she really took offense to that she was a total um as people call on tiktok and places like that she was a total karen, karen. a karen that's exactly <laughs> what she was yeah but like you just have to when you get people like that it's best to ignore them but sometimes you need to stand up for your product like sometimes you can't just if you can't just sit and take it and you're a person that really believes in your product, then don't feel bad for calling somebody mm -hmm. out when they're making your product and your business look bad for something that you didn't do. If they were saying, uh, this is poorly written and doesn't show Machu Picchu in the light that I think it should be shown, then you go, fair enough. If they go, this is riddled with spelling mistakes, whoever wrote this should, you're like, fair enough. If it's riddled with spelling mistakes, like, it's like, fair enough. If you know it's something that you've done and they don't agree with it, but this person was like adding us for something that we didn't do wrong. And it's like, that's when you have to stand mm -hmm. up for yourself because after her comment, a lot of people were getting on the back of her comment and people were starting to slate it. And I was worried they were going to start writing on the actual post. So I was like, let's address this in Facebook here before people who actually go to the post yeah. can see it and things like that. So sometimes it's best to stand up for yourself. Most of the times just walk away. No good can come from calling out people a lot. Of That's time. true. And then spending all your energy under that, it just makes you feel burnt out and not mm -hmm. want to continue. So yeah, sometimes it's best to ignore it. But as you say, stand up for your product. Cause sometimes when you do stand up, and they are commenting certain things. Other people might see it and believe that it's true, even when they haven't even read the thing. So they just yeah, assume exactly. that it's true, which kind of makes your, your business and your product look bad in a negative light when it's yeah, exactly, actually yeah. not so. And yeah. that's why you should put out things that you're proud of and that mm -hmm. you, you do actually want to send off for. Yeah, like never post anything that you think is subpar. Like never, like I've done... Like we we've done that before. Like I've written blogs where it's like this isn't very good, and then I've sent it. I've put it on the website, and just being like, no, I can't have that on the website, and taking it down like a week later. And because if that's the first po point of contact for people on your website, yeah. they're not going to go look through the rest of it if it's something that you consider not very good. So make sure everything that you put on there is something that you love and that you're proud of. Yeah, so yeah, that's a good advice, but there's also a twist to that because you see people who suffer from imposter syndrome, they will sit down and they will obsess over the work, even yeah. when nothing is wrong with it. So sometimes it's good to get like a trusted opinion from somebody else. Even if you yeah. don't feel that it's good enough, maybe ask somebody else, what do you think about this honestly? And yeah, that's why it's really great advice. to bring a friend on board as like an editor or, to, or like something like that. Like if you give somebody a title within your within your blog, <laughs> like make sure everything goes through you, but make sure they feel included so that they're on on board with they're on board with what you're doing. So everything so everything goes through you. You have the final say. It's all what you're proud of that's on there. But if you have a friend that you really trust and that is going to tell you the truth, if it's if it's garbage, <laughs> then bring them on, like bring them on. Like yeah. they they should be part of if you trust somebody that much, they should be part of your journey as well. I can't talk about other businesses, but for blogging, it's really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Well. For, for podcasts, blogging, like... it is for podcasts. It is as well, because yeah. your friends would sometimes, let you know, that you could have flow better here or areas in which you can improve. They'll always be there. About... The good thing I think about blogs, particularly our blog, is that you will get different writers as well. It's not going to be one person. So if so, if you don't like how one person has written this story, it really can, doesn't matter. You, yeah, you can like go to different blog, look that up, and also I think that's a good thing to just have like diversity. Yeah, it's like well. loads of different styles of loads of different styles of writing, of writing as well. So like you go through and it's like everybody writes things differently that's why it's really great that we both work together on it because i can say it's garbage and if you say it's good then i'm like right well if you <laughs> think it's good it's going on like you yeah. can 
you can stand up for it if somebody mm-hmm. s- says they hate it and stuff like that. And if you if, if it's something that you like, it is sometimes difficult when you have like kind of creative differences. We haven't had too many, but every now and again, it's like uh, it's more podcast, uh, more of a podcast thing where it's like we have a few creative differences and we say, I hate this. And you say you love it. And it's like you have to come to a compromise and stuff like that. But that's why it's really good to work with somebody that you're really close to and that you that you trust. Oh yeah, that's that's good advice. And for the last question, what resources would you recommend for anyone who wants to start a travel blog or well, I have a podcast and I'll do another yeah. episode on that, but I wanted to know um what resources would you what are some of the resources you would recommend for people to look out for or indulge in if they want to start their own blog? Yeah, so people get really into, if you go into, um, for people who are starting a blog for the first time and they've ne- never done it before, go look at Facebook groups like uh, new bloggers helping, like old bloggers helping new bloggers, like that kind of thing where people have been doing it for ages, like give you tips and you can ask whatever questions you want and somebody will give you tips. Like that's somewhere really helpful to start out, but don't freak out too much about like what website builder to use or what um don't worry about making it perfect like it doesn't when you start it doesn't have to be like amazing you don't have to work on it for like six months just for the website and the design and like things like that because we've we we know people who have done that and there's nothing wrong with it but it's just gonna like i think bring you down a little and make you maybe want to stop doing it because it's taken like six months or something to build the website so just like you will change it as you as you move forward yeah, so like, don't stress over about it it's like yeah. you change you change as you you change as you grow like that's just that's just something that happens and it's like we we use wix that's the we- website builder that's the website builder that we use because it's something that i'm comfortable with so it's it's important to use something that you're comfortable with and if you feel like moving on to a different site later on like in a year's time like we we might move we might move our website host onto wordpress because we're more experienced of what website of what building a website takes and what our website needs then you can do that in the future that's totally fine when you're starting up a website it's really really important to buy a domain name if you're worried about people viewing your stuff if you're not if you're not worried about viewing your stuff if you're doing it for yourself then it doesn't really matter but if you want views and you want people to find you and you want people to keep on finding you then it's really important to buy a domain name so our domain name is www.travelstoriesociety.com. But before you, before we bought that domain name, domain name, it was www.wix.com forward slash the Travel Story Society, which is a lot clunkier, mm-hmm. a lot harder to find on Google and stuff oh. like that. So you need to buy, you need to buy your domain name. That's number one. Get a website builder that you're already comfortable with is number two, and whatever you like to write on like it, like i prefer to write on google docs because it means i can share it with cynthia and she can do some editing wherever she goes and um then i can edit it wherever i go as long as there's wi-fi and if we're sending it to uh, if we want reese to have a look at it in cardiff we can all be on the same thing all at the same time like that's really that's really important but if you prefer we do that for school too school projects yeah yeah, exactly it's just whatever you feel most comfortable with it's what i used in school so that's why i feel (laughs) really comfortable with it like and you feel really comfortable with it because it's what it's what you use as well and don't worry too much about spending a lot on the biggest thing like or spending like if it's a podcast don't worry too much about buying the most expensive microphone like at first like as long as it can do the job as long as it's like a good mic obviously don't buy one that's like 10 pounds and is really crackly and stuff buy yeah. like just but if you can I find like, one that's yeah so like it does, expensive yeah it doesn't have to be like a road mic first up like mm-hmm. like road mics what everybody uses in the professionals you're not professional yet like like if you're just starting out you're not a professional yet you don't need it to be that you don't need it to be uh that kind of thing and it's the same with it's the same with uh, blogs as well. Use what you're comfortable with. And once you feel like you're good enough, then start paying for it. Because once you start paying for it, that's when it becomes more than just a hobby. That's yeah. when it becomes like something that you're actually spending money to do. And it's 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 very inexpensive. Like blogging isn't 
to set up our whole website, I think it cost, uh, and by the domain name, I think it cost us like 30 or 40 pounds for the year or something mm-hmm. like that. So it's, it's not like, it's not expensive. It's just once you've spent money on it, then you feel like you have to earn it back at some point. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I really do appreciate, you know, that answer. And I've, I've, I've gained a lot of introspection. Also, since you said something that was really important that I've also heard on a business podcast, and she said, don't worry if it's not perfect, start because you can always change it later. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you started. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What matters is just what you're actually putting out. Just be comfortable with what you're putting out and you yeah. can change the you whole You can always look. change it. You can yeah. always yeah. change it. And in those six months where you've been trying to perfect it, you've missed out on a certain amount of views that you could have been getting whilst perfecting yeah. it six months. Yeah. Off. Like like we've got over the six months, we've got about six thousand, we've got about six thousand views. So that's that's a lot of that's, views that that's we, a lot. And and we're getting to a point where our website is getting to where we want it to be. It's getting it's getting towards perfect. So you can do it at the same time. It's not like you're missing out on those views. And once your website is perfect. It takes at least six months before Google even starts to recognize your website and yeah. starts moving you up. So you may as so well have that had it would six be months a anyway. year then, because if you yeah, are exactly. going to sit and wait for six months and then sit down and wait for our next six months, that's a whole year of yeah. missing out on it's like it's, Yeah, it takes you six months and then you've got it set up. You're finally putting stuff up and then you're not getting any views because Google has you really low down on the ranks your seo isn't very good or you haven't made the social media following that you can make in six months you can get a decent sized social media following in six months like so you yeah. finally put your first blog up and it's not getting any views you're at the same stage you could have been six yeah. months ago if you just decided to just go for it and just put it up like just go for it just put it on the internet and then you can improve it as you go yeah yeah I really do appreciate that. And, you know, she reinstills some things that I already know to just always start and don't worry about things that aren't important. I want to thank you guys for coming today. I really do appreciate it. And I really do enjoy this episode. And I hope I'm I'm able to hear from you again about how it's going and how the business is going and stuff. I'll add all your information in my description box. And this episode, I think, would be posted, I think, next week, Sunday. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank yeah, you. great. Thank you so much. Yes. And Very thank you so well. much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'll see you guys soon because I want to have you back to hear how it's going and Ooh, stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> great. <laughs> awesome six six months time yeah 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 i'll make sure i put it in the calendar because i really want to see how it's going because you're already doing so well already so once people are able to travel you know we'll have to come out and see you from the next one in your lovely looking studio (laughs) you like like, got like i don't know whether you put things out as a video but there's blue lights and stuff going you do great you can see our studio here is completely plain <laughs> and then so you've got no, blue lights wall. going on it's the wall it's a blue wall yeah uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is this setup is it's my brother's because oh, he's, right, okay. he's a streamer and everything so i'm just borrowing <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. Yeah. God, I wish my brother was a streamer. That would make everything so much better. Could have matched you with the light. If it wasn't if, if it wasn't so sunny, I could have put some blue lights on. Never mind. Didn't think of it. Next time. Okay. Thank you for coming. And I'll see you guys in our next episode.